Hello and welcome. My name is Meeplus, she, they, and this is literally graphic. And today we are doing something a little different and flipping through a list of worthless comics. Pretty self-explanatory, the following are a handful of comics that I wanted to highlight but didn't have a lot to say about them. The thing they have in common is they are wordless, but otherwise they could not be more different. First off, the inspiration for this video was A-L-I-E-E-E-N by Louis Trondheim, published by First Second back in 2006. A-L-I-E-E-E-N was supposedly found by Lewis while on a camping trip, left behind by intergalactic travelers. I really enjoyed the cute art style and goofy body horror. I rated this book 4 out of 5 stars. Next up, we have a Travel by Yuchi Yokoyama, a silent manga that was published in 2008 by Picturebox. Very geometric and trying to do something different with the idea of story. I felt a bit overwhelmed by all the details that were highlighted equally. The facial similarities overpowered any of the differences that Yokoyama used to create recognizably different characters. Very cold, futuristic, and robotic feeling to me. It was interesting and successful at what it seemed to be going for, but not a new favorite. Moving along to a classic I'm sure many of have of you have seen, namely The Arrival by Sean Tan, a fictionalized representation of an immigrant's journey with many magical and fantastical elements. A lot of people really enjoyed this book and its positive representation of immigration, but I do question if it does anything more than make people who feel like they agree with the message of the book feel good. While the front and back pages do represent many racially diverse people, the characters centered in this appear to be historic European immigrants, probably people fleeing the Holocaust. I'm not sure how Australia treated Jews fleeing the Holocaust, but the USA did refuse many of these refugees. This more historic focus also turns the lens away of how immigration and being a refugee looks today, namely abusive to say the least. That said, the art is very beautiful, it does represent poor characters in a positive light, and it's a very successful wordless comic. Up next, we have The Box Man by Imiri Sakabashira, a wordless comic that follows a man with a box. In this story, Sakabashira toes the line between conventional storytelling and abstract randomness quite deftly. He goes in so many interesting directions, but they are all tied together with an incredibly strong sense of narrative. I'm sure that more than a few cultural and pop cultural references went completely over my head, but I never felt like it. Knowing and not knowing, the world and its story never seems shallow. Circling back to first second, we have Robot Dreams by Sarah Varon, an innocent enough story. I never really enjoy stories about characters making small mistakes that ruin everything, because that's my IRL fear. That said, it's cute, and if you like dogs and robots, maybe for you.
And finally, the oldest wordless comic I wanted to talk about today, The Sun, The Idea, and Story Without Words, three graphic novels by Franz Mazuriel, was originally published separately in the late 1910s. Content note, for much more nudity than I was expecting. <laughs> I find the style of woodcuts to be incredibly intriguing and the story is pretty engrossing. Thank you for coming on this journey with me. It's often hard to dedicate a full review to just one silent comic, but this has been fun and hopefully pointed you in a few interesting directions. Other wordless comic creators I have highlighted previously are Thomas Ott, Christophe Chabot, and of course the manga series Gone by Masashi Tanaka. Bye y'all, keep reading, and resist white supremacy. And as always, Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation. 